All right, so good day, everyone. And yes, this is my last discussion for my three topics. And for my last topic, it's about language and ethnicity. I hope you were able to comprehend my first two YouTube discussions on a limited time. All right, so I will go right into my topic, last topic, so language and ethnicity. We were able to learn already basic language principles, language and variation, and this is the last, okay? So what do we expect to learn? This report covers the following, uh -huh, ethnicity or ethnic groups. Second, its relation to language. And third, its relevance to teachers and students. So we have to define first what is an ethnic group or ethnicity. So it is a socially defined category of people who identify with each other based on common ancestral, social, cultural, or national experience, okay? So ethnic group, it also involves the way you dress, the way you speak, the way you act, okay? which are influenced by the group of people who you have in close contact with, okay? So in addition, ethnicity is not a natural category, but a social and political construct, okay? It's how, it's like your extrinsic influences, all right? And... Also, in learning ethnicity, you also have to distinguish what is a race. So when we say race, it is an ethnic group that is assumed to have a biological bias or basis. For example, I was born a Filipino, so that is my race. You're born an African, that is your race and stuff, okay, biological basis. And sometimes race and ethnicity we tend to mix that one up, but they are entirely different, okay? So let's say, for example, let's have this illustration. Have you heard of white Americans and black Americans? So white Americans, mm -hmm. there's a notion before that if you are white, you, you speak white speech. If you are black, you speak black speech. But we have to be aware that these notions are just kind of their social reality, okay? And it does not work that way. So what does it imply? So if it means that if you are a black, you speak black speech, if you are white, you speak white speech, and you say that it is just a kind of their social reality, what does it imply? So first implication, whether one speaks white or black, English, it, it is the result of a learned behavior, okay? Second, people do not speak the way they do because they are white or black. Third, speakers acquire the linguistic characteristics of those they live in close contact with. So let us say, for example, one of the movies that we normally watch, okay, wherein um, a black girl are friends with a white girl, okay, then they tend to have or they tend to speak the same language. They tend to have, they tend to share the same language, the way they speak, their accent and stuff, it's the same, okay? Meaning, when we refer to ethnicity, okay, it's how other people, everything about the other people would influence you as a person, okay? That's ethnicity. Those you live in close contact with, okay? So we have here some ethnic groups in the United States. So I got this from the link that Doc Pineda had shared to me. So we have African Americans, Latinos, Native Americans, and lastly, Asian and, U and European Americans. So I will give you an overview if who are they, okay? So we have here, but before you, we go over with those ethnic groups, I will show you a short video on the population of the United States based on ethnicity.
OK。So as you can see, that's the population they have based on the race and ethnicity as the time goes by. Okay, so that's projected in 2060. Okay, so you have their black, white, Hispanic, Native American, Asian, two or more other ethnicities. Okay. So we now go to African Americans. So who are they? So they are slave descendants actually in US before. Okay, so this variety has been referred to by several names. They are called before as Black English Vernacular, African American Vernacular English, AAE, African American English, okay? African American Language and Ebonics. Okay, so those are their terms before for African Americans. And as you can see, here's the example pictures of who they were, who they are. So I have here a comparison actually if what's the difference or some linguistic features of African American English. So AAE stands for Amer um, American English, okay, and MAE Modern African American English and MAE Modern American English Glossary. So you have here the difference, left for left, desk for desk, talking for talking, thin for thin, Bath for bath, then for then, brother for brother, police for police, he walk, he walks. Okay, so as you can see, there's some grammatical differences between the two, pronunciation differences between the two. Okay, so that's how African American, uh, African Americans would speak the language. So there's a variation, there's a difference. Okay. She late, uh, she done did it, he don't do nothing. Especially if you are listening to a lot of rap songs now. Let's say, for example, they, the current African-American artists, so we have now rappers, they tend to follow still these kind of speaking, all right? And also, it's, it's, it exists on movies, okay? So that's the difference between the two. Then we go to Latinos. Who are they? They are Mexican Americans, Puerto Rican Americans, Dominican Americans, and other Latino groups. So if, if African Americans are slave descendants, Latinos are actually immigrants. Okay, they tend to migrate to America. And when they got there, they tend to develop Chicano English. It is a term used to describe the English of Latin American immigrants to the United States. Most of these are from Mexico, and the label probably derives from the name of that country. This variety of English shows features of Spanish, especially in phonology. Okay, so Latinos, you know now, speak Chicano English. So according to research, PEW -P Research Center, Okay, importance of English and Spanish. So they are asked two questions. Do you think adult Hispanic immigrants need to learn English to succeed in the U.S.? Yes, okay. How important is it to you that future generations of Hispanics living in the U.S. be able to speak Spanish and those stuff? So as you can see, according to this research, it's very important that you have a balanced language. You have to learn English and Spanish or Hispanic at the same time. Okay. Then we go to the third ethnic group that is Native Americans. So currently the Native American languages with the most speakers are Navajo, 130,000 speakers in Utah, Arizona, Colorado, and New Mexico. Cherokee, called by Cherokee, 14,000 in North Carolina and Oklahoma and other languages. So here's the example picture. Then here's the map on where those native languages would be located, okay? So that's how it looks like. So here's US. So here's the native languages. Navajo is here, Navajo. Okay, so you can see it's the most spoken Native American language. Then we go to the fourth, Asian American. So this includes groups with origins as diverse as East Asia, South Asia, and Southeast Asia. 
So like Latinos, we are also immigrants. Okay, we tend to travel to U.S. Okay, wow, I traveled to U.S. before. Okay, we tend to migrate to U.S. So the largest U.S. Asian groups in U.S., as you can see, U.S. Asians, okay, uh, Chinese is the highest. We are second. Imagine that. Then Indian, Vietnamese, Korean, and Japanese. So here are the immigrants, Asian Americans on America. Okay. Then lastly, we have the European Americans. So here are the pictures of some of the artists that are European Americans. So social linguists are increasingly examining the language practices of European Americans and the linguistic construction of whiteness. Because we know that Europeans okay, are already white. So plus Americans, they are white. <laughs> okay. So there's a, there's a coined term before that if you are European Americans, you are termed to the construction of whiteness. Okay. So here's the map. Okay. So English is red. Anglo-Irish, this color, Irish, Irish, German. Okay, so that's the map. Imagine, imagine the number of speakers in the language. Okay, number of speakers in this continent. Okay. <clears throat> now, real question is, what is the relevance of ethnicity to language? So ethnicity actually shapes the language that each ethnic group has. Okay, they have their own distinct language because of the kind of ethnic group that they have. Now, the question is, what is the relevance of language and ethnicity to teachers and students? Why are we learning this? So we have to learn that ethnic groups and boundaries are not fixed, but constantly shifting, especially when we tend to migration is easy now, more easy compared to the past. We tend to, we tend to have Airplanes migrate from one place to another, except from now because we have COVID. But the thing is, it's easy now to transfer from one location to another. So it is not constant. Okay, it's changing. It's shifting. Then educators must avoid social inequality in classrooms. So normally, we tend to have uh, immigrants in our classes like last school year in face-to-face, -face, I had one Turkish student with the blood of a Filipino, half Turkish, half Filipino. Her mom is a Filipina and his dad is Turkish. So of course, because of the ethnic group that she came from, she tends to behave different from her classmates. So her classmates would tend to, to behave differently as well to her. Okay, so there's a social inequality that would happen if we don't discuss language and ethnicity in our classroom. Third relevance, there is no one-to-one -one correspondence between language and ethnicity, okay? Because there are some ethnic groups that do not speak the same ethnic groups that others have or ethnicity or language that others have, okay? So there is no one-to-one -one correspondence. So I may belong to Asian Americans, but I also know how to do native language, like I know how to speak Navajo, okay? So there's no one-to-one -one correspondence. And lastly, like I mentioned a while ago, discussions on language and ethnicity need to be incorporated in classroom because we wanted to avoid social inequality. Okay, when students are aware that there are a lot of ethnic groups and each ethnic group requires a different language, a different kind of culture, then they get to be open-minded and not judge easily or tend to adapt easily, okay, because they learn or they know these things, that we have language and ethnicity, that ethnicity shapes the language and language is the representation of what ethnic group you belong. Okay, so it is very important that we have to incorporate language and ethnicity in our classroom discussion. Okay, so before I end, I will share two quotes. So one is from Rita Mae Brown. She said, language is the roadmap of a culture. It tells you where its people come from and where they are going. It is true. Okay, 
And lastly, ethnicity should enrich us. It should make us unique people in our diversity and not be used to divide us. So like I said earlier in my previous slides, that language has the power to unite and divide people. So ethnicity should make us unique people and not be used to divide us. Okay, it's a matter of respect and a matter of being open-minded. Okay, so that's according to Alan Johnson Sirleaf. And this marks the end of my presentation, but I would like to say or to cite my references. So we have here two links from SlideShare and, and Research that I used and Potoon. Thank you. And Language and Ethnicity by Angela Reyes. So thank you so much. This is the link doc or the, the third reference is the link that you have shared to me. Okay, so thank you for listening, Doc Pineda and classmates. I hope you have learned a lot from my discussion, even though it's just minutes, okay? So thank you so much and God bless us all. Bye!